All right, well, greetings once again from the Pennsylvania woods here. Got a beautiful spot here up the stream, and uh, got my stuff set up over here. But uh, last, well, I guess it was last week. I think I mentioned this in my, another video, but I was helping out with a like a girls' camp. They called the American Heritage Girls. I, I've mentioned that before, but they were. Uh, it's kind of like the Girl Scouts, and they were. You know, they earned different badges like the Girl Scouts, and they were. This past week, they were kind of like a. Well, they called it the cabin but it was kind of like a, a camp. Um, and one of the badges they were working on was a fire starting badge. And, you know, I worked with that and on that a little bit. Another guy was helping too, but one of the things I did was test different fire starting materials with them, which should not be pretty cool. I had tried something I had never tried before. Um, you know, on a, you know, if it's a crisp, you know, non-humid, and it's been dry for several days, you know, starting a fire, if, you know, finding dry kindling and tinder is easy and getting a fire going is no problem. But on other days, it can be quite difficult. Like today, it's very humid, it just rained, um, and trying to find materials to start a fire can be pretty difficult. So um, sometimes you need a little help, like a fire starter. So that's what we're gonna talk about today a little bit. And a fire starter is not something that just lights for a few seconds, it's usually something that you want, it's something that you want to burn for quite a while to help your fire get going. Because if your tinder or your kindling is just a little bit damp, um, the few seconds that your match is lit may not be enough to get the fire going. So a fire starter is something that will burn for a longer period of time to help get your fire going. I mean, that's one way to look at it. Um, there's all different kinds of fire starters. You can buy some. There's some found out in the woods. So I have a variety of different ones we're going to try. And we'll uh, look at the, maybe the pros and cons of each one. And these are just a sampling of the ones that you can use. Um, there's all kinds of other fire starters out there. So I'm going to get my stuff set up and uh, we'll get going with this video. It should be pretty fun, actually, trying all these different things. I think all but one of them I've tried before. I think. We'll see. I forget, but we'll find out. So I have a total of six different fire starters to try out with you here. At least, at least I think I have six if I counted correctly. But uh, hopefully, get these done. It got a little bit dark out here in the woods again, so it had just rained earlier. It's like isolated thunderstorms this afternoon. So hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll get these all in. Hopefully. All right. So the first one we're going to try is yellow birch bark, and one of the reasons it came to this spot is because I knew some yellow birch trees that were just growing just off the road up there. So, I'm going to go ahead and light this, and as long as it is yellow birch, it should light up. So, now you can see it definitely makes a good strong flame there. It burns for a prolonged period of time. I'm going to get burnt here soon. That's kind of what you want with a fire starter, is for it to burn for a prolonged period of time like this to help get your fire started. So it's worked out pretty well. Um, there is an oil... I gotta get rid of this. It's gonna burn my fingers soon. <sighs> it does blow out. All right. Um, so, that definitely burns well. Um, one downside to birch bark is you have to know what's well, yellow birch. There's different kinds of birch trees here in Pennsylvania. There's the most common one is the sweet birch or the black birch. Their bark does not burn like this. I've tried it before. So you have to know what a yellow birch tree looks like in order to get the bark from it. You know, just not any old bark from a tree will work. The yellow birch has certain oils in it that burn like that nicely. Um, so that's one downside to it. If you don't know what a yellow birch tree looks like and also they don't grow everywhere um they're not the most common birch tree here in pennsylvania i think they grow more mountainous regions in within the state so and, and in other states here in the east coast but so as you can see it burned well if you had a whole pile of it it would burn really nicely um but like i said you have to know what it looks like as a tree and it has to be growing in your area one other downside to using the, the yellow birch bark um I had some in my backpack for quite a while, and when I was working, I think two years ago, I was working with those American Heritage girls again. I pulled this out of my pack. I was like, check this out, girls. This is going to light up real well, and it, and it didn't. 
And I was like, oh, okay. And I think what happened is, because it was in my pack for so long, I think the oils evaporated out of the bark and it was no longer flammable like it was before. So it has to be fresh from my perspective. So it's not one of those things. I mean, I'm sure if it, you have it in your pack for just a couple of weeks or something, it'll be all right. But if you have it in there for months, it's not going to be uh, viable anymore for a fire starter. I mean, it still might be nice dry stuff to help light a fire, but that oil is not going to be in it anymore, at least from my experience. All right, fire starter number two is going to be something you're all familiar with, Fritos corn chips. I got the big, this is a medium bag. I couldn't find a small bag, but I like to eat them anyway. They're probably not healthy for you, but. So I got just one single one out, a little corn chip. Now, I know these burn, I've tried this before. So let's get the slider going again. There she goes. Holds a nice steady flame. If you had, once again, it's, it kind of burns like the birch bark does. And once again, if you had a whole pile of these, you know, they would burn very nicely. Help get your fire going. Let's blow that one out. Oh, that's pretty bad. Sorry about that. Um, some pros and cons for the corn chips. Obviously, it burned really well there. Like I said, we had a pile of them. Um, so if you had those, you know, if you get lost in the woods and you had like a pack of those for lunch or something, you obviously would help be able to help start a fire. But um, as far as packing them with you like all the time for adventures and stuff, I don't know if that'll work out so well because I definitely would. You definitely wouldn't want to bring a big bag like that with you along. But if you had one of the smaller bags, I don't know. Um, the problem is they have a they're gonna get they're gonna get crushed and break them into all tiny pieces and be pretty much useless, I think. And I think if they if they would get stale too, I think they would be useless after a while. I think all the oil would evaporate again, but um, they they work. So surprisingly, all it's probably all that oil in them isn't probably all that healthy for you either. So corn chips work too. Like I said, they just if you had them in your backpack long term, they'd probably get crushed and and just be more of a nuisance than than a help. So just my thoughts. All right. So here's fire star number three, dryer lint. This is for my dryer, my clothes. So, um, and I've heard you could do different things with this. This is just regular dryer lint. Um, some people put Vaseline on it. I am doing something else with Vaseline that works really well, but I, I've never tried just dryer lint. So I'm gonna go ahead and light this just to see what it burns like and how long. So let's get this going. Get my lighter started here. There you go. It does burn, well, it burns pretty quick. It's coming down to my fingers. Yeah, so it burns pretty quick. Um, but if you had a whole pile of it, like that was just a small, well, like a medium sized piece. Yeah, that burns really well. It just doesn't have the, I think it would burn itself out a lot quicker than a pile of corn chips or that birch bark would though. It doesn't have any oil in it, it's just dry material, so it's actually burning pretty fast. Um, but if you did mix Vaseline with that, it would work really well, because I'm going to do that with something else here in a moment. So, yeah, and dryer lint is practically weightless, so if you kept you know, a pile of dryer lint in your hiking bag, and of course it would flatten out too, um, it would probably would work pretty well. So the fourth one is a cotton ball smothered in Vaseline. And I just made it here, so now my fingers are all a little slimy feeling, but uh, I think it would be best to make these at home and put them in a Ziploc bag for hiking and stuff. So let's go ahead and get this one going. I tried this one for the first time with those American Heritage girls, and it really it worked really well actually. Let's get it lit here. Maybe get it lit. There we go. See it burns. If it was just a cotton ball, it'd probably burn faster, but that oil gives it a nice slow burn. Much stronger burn than I think any other fire starters we used so far. You can feel the heat on my fingers. So yeah, I liked this one the mess. The most, the most. Ooh, it's really going. So if you can see if you had a little pile of these, that's quite a nice fire starter you got going there. Actually, I'm gonna throw this on the ground now because I'm getting a little warm. Oh, it does blow out. And I'm not gonna leave all this trash here in case you're wondering. Get rid of it. So the next fire starter is a, more of a commercial one I bought at Walmart. It was pretty cheap. 
comes a nice box uh, called Zip, I guess. Lights wood fast. All premium, all purpose fire starter. For camping, wood fires, and grilling. It has these little packets in it, look like this. It says it's supposed to burn for, uh, I think it says somewhere around 18, 18 minutes. So, I've never tried one of these. I'm pretty sure it'll work, but uh, you know, this is very lightweight, so this might be something to take along with you on a hiking trip or something. Just one or one of these, maybe, or two of them. Um, it is a little more bulkier than some of the other products, but it doesn't really squish or deteriorate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to hold this one while I light it. I'm going to put it on the ground. We'll video it on the ground as I light it. I think that'll work better. So the direction said just to light the package itself, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that gives, I think it's, well, it's almost the plastic burning there, that bright flame. So all the plastic is burned off, and that's just the little gray brick thing burning right there. It's quite a, that's quite a hefty little flame going there. So yeah, I mean that would, if that doesn't get your fire started, then uh, there's no hope for you probably. Because that is a strong, that is a strong flame. It burns for quite a while. And that thing is still burning. It's been a number of minutes already. It's still going strong. So um, this one definitely burns the longest out of all of the ones we've used. I got one more to try it, so I'll talk more about this one later, I think, but yeah. Actually, maybe I'll talk about it now, but I think I think I'm going to put some of these in my pack, at least one or two of these, because this puppy just keeps burning and burning and burning. I mean, it says a, I think the pack said it burns for 18 minutes, so even if you, if it was like wintertime and you just need to warm up your hands, if you're cold and like, you know, you know how you get so cold as long as you can't feel your hands or so, if you just light one of these up, right in the snow even, and just hold your hands next to it, it'll warm your hands right up. I was just thinking about this sitting here. These are pretty cool actually, I mean, I think I've used these before for camping, but number one, like, a small one like this, I think there are bigger ones I used in a, I made in a wood stove already, like a bigger one, but this one's pretty cool, actually. The more I sit here watching, I think it, it, it's the kind of thing that could be a real lifesaver. They, they, they weigh hardly anything, so just to keep, you know, several of them in your pack would be a good idea, actually. It's still, it just keeps burning and burning. I can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it's starting to, the uh, block itself is starting to disappear. The flame is still going strong. Alright, so I got one more I want to show you. That one fine went out. Just I was just sitting here, uh snacking on some of those corn chips, waiting for that one to go out. So that one burned quite a, quite a while. The last one I'm going to do here, um, of course, some, most of you know I, I teach, one of the classes I teach is chemistry. So I got two, I got two different chemicals here. Um, and one is, this is glycerin, and here is something called potassium permanganate. Um, I tried this once on the Appalachian Trail. Um, it was getting late, but everything was wet. It didn't really start the fire because everything was soaked. But I'm going to show you what these do anyway um, for fire starting. It's pretty cool. You don't need a you don't need a cigarette light or matches or anything to get this going. So let me get this set up and I'll show you what happens with it. I think I'll show you right here on this log because there's my cotton ball and Vaseline over there. But I think I'll do it right here. So I'm going to put some uh, potassium permanganate down first. Put a little divot in the middle there for our glycerin. And we'll just add just a little bit of glycerin to the top. Put that down and just wait a couple seconds. There it goes. Boom, flame. And then it's out. Of course, that one's pretty cool. Even the uh, 
the girls I was working with last last week, they liked that one. I had to do it like three times for them because they, they thought it was pretty cool. Um, that one you don't need matches or a cigarette lighter to get it going. Um, only downside you can see is that it doesn't burn that long, but if you had very dry tinder and kindling, it would be enough to get a fire going. Um, if I was taking that along with me on hikes, so I would use smaller containers. You don't need quite as much. Of course, you'd have to keep the stuff separate in your pack. Um, you don't want them mixing together or else your pack will uh, self-combust as you're hiking along. So that's something to think about too. Like it, it's potassium permanganate and uh, glycerin will do it. And there's other chemicals you could use too. I'm not going to mention them on here. Um, some of them are hard to some are hard to hard to obtain chemicals. But anyway, I'll let that go. Um, the one last thing I would do is show you, just compare different types of matches quickly. Um, because there are different types that you can buy. Some are really cheap, some are a little more expensive. Um, but matches are important if you're relying on them to start a fire. Like these are the cheap, pretty sure I got these at Walmart. This is home life. You get a, you get like 10 of these little packs all shrink wrapped together and like, like for 50 cents. Um, and we'll light one up here. Hopefully. There we go. You see it lights, but it doesn't last that long. And if the slightest breeze comes along, these these are done. These are done for. Um, I've had trouble with those in the past. Because um, recently I made a, I, recently one of my students had died. I made a, a, a video kind of remember, you know, honoring her memory. And I lit a candle in that video. But what you didn't what you couldn't tell from the video was is it took me 10 matches to light that candle. Um, the wick was a little short, but there was just the slightest breeze blowing, and every time I lit it with one of these cheapos, it, it just went out right away. I felt kind of stupid, but that's what these are like. So if you're relying on these in a survival situation, like if, like if you, I use these for when, where I used to live. I had a wood stove, and these are fine for that because you're inside, there's no breeze blowing. But if you're outside in the elements, where, like I said, your tinder might be a little damp and there's a bit of a breeze blowing. This is almost worthless. You're going to go through the whole box of matches and not get a fire stuff. So what I have here are storm-proof matches. Um, I think it says they're, does it say they're waterproof? Yeah, it says they're windproof and waterproof. Because you can tell they look quite a bit different than those cheapo ones. I should make fun of those cheap. Those cheaper ones work, but in a survival situation. So I'm going to light one of these, and you can see a big difference between them. So hopefully it lights. Hopefully I'll make an idiot of myself here. There you go. See how that one... A nice strong flame it just keeps going and going and going it's gonna burn down that whole orange part so if you're trying to get a fire a stubborn fire started you're lot you know these are a lot more helpful a lot more useful and then they're done so those matches are just one other thing to consider like I said those cheapos were 50 cents for a whole bunch of them there's storm proof ones I think it was it three bucks 250 or three bucks for just one box of them but they're worth it in a in a survival situation are worth it. I wouldn't buy those to start a wood stove or stuff like that, but if you're out here where you need a stronger flame for an extended period of time, one of those is much more helpful. So I hope this video was helpful and informative in some ways. You know, if you have other things to comment on, go ahead and do that. Or if you have other ideas for fire starters, you can go ahead and comment down below. Um, but I think those little bricks, the fire starter itself that I had, I thought these are pretty awesome. I, like I said, I'll put, I'm going to definitely put some of these in my pack, having seen how they work. Like I said, you could use those just to warm your hands up in the wintertime if you're cold. Um, my second favorite would be the cotton ball, the Vaseline. I did just one of them, but we had a group of them together. Because we used those, because for, for that camp with the girls, they actually had to start their own fire then. And they, I gave them each a cotton ball like that, and they had no trouble starting a fire using that. So Anyway, like I said, you can leave comments below what you liked. And... Uh, Anyway, I'll see you around in the next video sometime.